What's up everybody, my name is Joshua Yale, and as a lifelong fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I was blown away by The Last Ronin, which follows the last surviving turtle on his dark and bloody quest to finally take down the Foot Clan. But as it turns out, The Last Ronin was not the last turtle story, because it ends with four little baby turtles. I wonder what's gonna happen to them. Well, I'm getting super hyped to find out in the sequel, The Last Ronin 2 Re-Evolution, where we meet the next generation of turtles all grown up and ready to rock. So who better to talk to about it than the co-creator of Ninja Turtles and the co-writer of The Last Ronin 2, Kevin Eastman. What's up, Kevin? Hey, how are you? Nice great. to be here. Great, Thanks yeah, thank on. you. It's great to, to talk to you again. I actually uh, met you at Comic-Con also to talk about uh, The Last Ronin 2. That was last year. When I met you, I actually uh, gave you my, my graphic novel here and asked you to sign it. But what I did not realize um, is that you actually sketched in it for me I didn't get, actually notice that until you had already like left the room. So I just wanted to say, thank you so much. This is now my most prized possession. Well, that's really nice. Thanks. It's, it's, it's something I started doing um, many years ago. Where I feel like the, the remark or a little doodle sketch makes it a little bit more personal. And it's not just some, somebody that scrawled a signature in your book. It's sort of a little bit more of a memento. So it's uh, glad to do it. It's, it's good fun. Thank you, thank you, it's very special. It, it, it was actually great for me, but terrible for the rest of our crew, because I went around and told everybody, like, did you see what Kevin did for me? Did you see what Kevin did? Okay, um, but enough about that. Um, you know, it is always a pleasure to talk to you because I know you always bring the goods. And this time, I mean that literally, because you have given us an amazing piece of art from inside The Last Ronin 2, where the new turtles are jumping into action alongside a woman in a purple costume, it looks very familiar. Can you break down what moment we're seeing here? Yes, taking a step back and even looking at um, the idea of doing a part two, do a sequel, um, was something that we really questioned and, and really hadn't planned when we started doing Last Round. And so we found a place that we wanted to stay and tell stories for uh, as long as we could. And so the evolution of the new turtles and, and this and what you're seeing here specifically is uh, takes place 16 years after. Last run in one ended. Uh, Casey Marie Jones is the woman in the purple you see there with uh, the half of a Casey mask on. And uh, she's trained to become the uh, sensei uh, and uh, general parent of the new turtles. They're going out on one of their first missions. So I want to hear all about these new Ninja Turtles. Um, and I know with the original four, they all have a you know very defining personality trait that people know them by, you know, Donnie's brainy and Mikey's like silly. Um, but what would you say, uh, you know, are the personality defining traits of this new generation of turtles? Well, you know, it's tough to know to, to, to not want to give you lots and lots and lots and lots of spoilers. <laughs> One of the things that we did want to, um, to do was, was really update the characters. There's two male, two female, um, uh, turtle characters and me and tom trying to write um what teenagers might think and, and say and do especially said in the the story takes place in the future but it was really to um come up with some familiar stereotypes of personalities and characters but make uh, them interesting and unique and something that we experience and even talking with you know our kids or other kids uh, that we meet at shows and stuff so yeah there's there's a, a nice cross-section of different personalities um much like the original turtles you want to have them always love their family but not always like them and so they might argue they might spat they might have disagreements but when they need to work together as a team it's the the heart and soul of the family that always keeps them together and that's um, that's always going to be the foundation of anything we do with turtles so these turtles look very different from the originals uh, can you share how you came up with these these designs because i'm seeing per turtles of different silhouettes and different colors yeah, how did you come up with these? It was it was tough, and it was one of those things that um you know when you're following in the footsteps of something that works so well on the so many levels, um, but it was one of those things also when you look back at the original creation of the shows, they all had a very similar look, a very similar style. It really wasn't until say some of the early episodes of the cartoons where we even did things like uh, changing the color of the bandanas and things like that. But with this, I had a specific idea. Tom and I had a very specific idea. We wanted them to be different species of turtles. So they would have different physical attributes and that would translate into their height and weight and even uh, personality and so i gave some sketches uh, a whole lot of reference uh, to the amazing ben bishop and said give me some some of your first thoughts and so ben really crafted some beautiful silhouettes and some unique d designs and it was uh you know going through the process of seeing all these you know quote unquote naked turtles and then wanting to put 
outfits on them and in and play dress up and, and making them work logically and sensibly of what they, they might be. But it was it was fun. We were very pleased. It was a lot of good work getting to something that I, I felt worked as a, a, a unique look for them. It goes without saying that The Last Ronin has been a, a big hit, a huge hit. It's like constantly on like the, the bestsellers list. But you know, as you know, being nerds, we immediately start dreaming of it becoming, you know, a video game, a movie, a TV show. We already know there's a video game in the work. Um, but in the realm of movies, I'm not sure if you saw, but uh, director Zack Snyder recently professed his love for Ninja Turtles and he showed off his classic Mirage TMNT comics. Um, so what are your thoughts on the last Ronin movie and would Zack Snyder being involved interest you at all? Oh, most definitely. Um, absolutely. No, I've been a uh, certainly a fan of Zack Snyder. We've gotten to be friends over the years. We've met on a couple of different projects that never got off the ground, but I feel like the best part of it became, you know, get to be that we get to be friends. Um, he's uh, a fan, a very solid fan of <clears throat> this genre. These, you know, whether it be movies or comics, he's a very serious heavy metal comic fan. He'd be he'd be a, an amazing director, and I thought it was a real treat that he pulled out some of his original comics for an interview he did recently. You know, it's interesting when we looked at the opportunities to continue telling stories in the Roninverse. A movie was it was definitely a natural, something we thought would be uh, wonderful to pursue. Paramount and their decision to do uh, an amazing movie with Seth Rogen with the Mutant Mayhem Project, which I thought was absolutely laugh out loud, hilariously funny, beautifully done. Um, and there's going to be more in that universe. It seemed the natural that Last Ronin would evolve as a video game. It seemed like we could hit all of the... Uh, the attitudes and the action and the intensity of the series in a video game format. And we've seen a lot of development on it. I could not be more excited in that. When you look at it in the comic book, you see flat surface, a level, a plane, a building. You see this part of it. The video game, suddenly we can go around the corner and we can go, you know, we can see all the rest of it. And the uh, designers and the artisans um, that are bringing the video game to life are fans as well. And they, it feels like some of the stuff's been ripped right out of the pages of the comic book. They're going all the way in and then some. So it's, it's looking really excited. I'm excited for fans to see more of what they're doing on the video game. Okay, Kevin. Well, I cannot wait to read The Last Ronin 2. Uh, so when does it come out? Man, I wish it was tomorrow, because um, <laughs> I'm excited for everybody to see it. But March 6th is the official date that um, it's coming out, and we're excited that it's going to be full format, 40 pages an issue. It's going to be bi-monthly. Um, but yeah, I can't wait for fans to read the first issue. So March 6th, be there, be square, and I can't wait. Well, I have no intention of being square. Uh, thank you so much for the information, Kevin. Uh, and for everyone at home, if you want to keep up to date on The Last Run and 2 as it's coming out, keep it locked on IGN.